Good morning everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Fallon and I'm back in the kitchen where I spend majority of my time. But in this week's video, I thought I would show you guys just some different meals that I cook for my family over the course of a week. And hopefully you can incorporate one of these meals um, into your rotation if you're like me, kind of running out of things to cook. Um, but these meals are for my family of soon to be nine. Little baby bump. So I'll go ahead and let you guys see what I cooked uh, for the past week. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button down below so you'll see when I post all my new videos. All right, so I'm starting dinner today. We're doing uh, shrimp and grits. So I have my grits. They're cooking. I cook them slow because I don't like gritty grits or lumpy grits. So I cook them really slow. So I got the grits cooking right here. And then um, this is just butter and olive oil. I'm going to let the butter melt down and then I'm going to throw the rest of the shrimp in there to kind of saute a little bit. On my shrimp, it's just, um, what is it, Old Bay and a little bit of salt. Okay, so the butter has melted. I'm going to go ahead and start adding the shrimp to the pan to let them cook. You don't want to overcook your shrimp. And these are little, so um, maybe two minutes per side, but you don't want to overcook them because it ends up be rubbery and that's nasty. All right, so my shrimp, they're ready to be flipped. You see how they look mostly pink? So you're gonna flip them over and maybe let them cook for another minute, not very long. Like I said, I don't want no rubbery shrimp. So you're gonna just flip them, let them cook a little bit longer and then just take them out of the pot. All right, so I'm gonna let them cook for just a few more seconds and I'm gonna scoop them out. All right, so I got all my shrimp cooked and then in the rest of the oil, um, I'm gonna saute up these vegetables. And then another, in another pan, I'm going to go ahead and do, I got three strips of bacon and then like a third of a sausage roll, like the Jimmy Dean sausage. Um, I'm going to saute those and add it all together with a little bit of whipping cream. So over here, I have my grits cooking slow. And only thing I put in my grits is um, some salt, pepper, and butter. I don't use like milk and all that in my grits. I don't do all that. So salt, pepper, and butter. So I cook down the bacon and the um, pork. And then over here in the pan where I cook the shrimp, I'm gonna saute, I have a whole red bell pepper. I like the red one because it adds a little sweetness to the grits when you put it on top. So the whole red bell pepper, and then I have like a maybe a quarter of a whole onion. I don't like a lot of onions in mine. But I'm just gonna cook this down a lot because um, I don't like it to be crunchy in my grits. Um, but I'll come back when it starts to look the way I want it to. My grits are done. Um, you just want to taste them and make sure you know they taste how you want them to taste. I don't like sweet grits now. I like salt and butter in my grits, but that's the consistency I like them to be. I don't want my grits to be all thick. That's nasty. So I'm just going to put the top back on those and cut it down to low. And then over here, um, my peppers and onions looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in the bacon and the pork since the peppers look good. You know, toss that around a little bit. So I'm gonna cut it down some and add in my heavy cream. Let's see. And that was about, what is this? What's the quart? That was about uh, maybe half a quart. And then you wanna just stir that around and I'm gonna let it cook down just a little bit so it'll thicken up some. And do not add the shrimp while it's doing that because the shrimp is already cooked. So if you add the shrimp in too, the shrimp will get rubbery and that's gonna be nasty. All right, so here is my little cream mixture stuff, whatever you wanna, I don't know what you would call it, but I don't know. But it's gotten thicker. It's kind of white though, I don't like it. It looks so white. So. Throw a little paprika in there. Cause Pam always told me it don't got no um no no flavor. Just give it a little bit of color. But I tasted it and it tastes good. So I'm gonna go ahead and um fix my plate because she gonna she gonna eat with us today. Usually she be acting like a teenager. So I'm gonna go ahead and plate it up. And then you 
just do a little bit of this over the top. So this is how it looks once I get it all done. And some some of the kids like to put cheese in their grits. I don't like cheese in my grits, but you know. But she about to go eat. So this is Sunday's dinner. Hey y'all, it's Tuesday. Um, I'm working today, but I need to start dinner. So today for dinner, I'm just gonna do like barbecue meatballs and um, sweet potatoes. I don't know, some type of a uh, vegetable, probably broccoli. Something I can throw on real quick. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to get some of this started before I get another call. So I'm just gonna start with the sweet potatoes because that'll take the longest to cook. Um, I usually throw them on the stove and do them, but I'm working and I don't have time to watch them, so I'm just gonna throw them in the oven. I have already cut up my potatoes and I'm just gonna layer everything in here. Uh, so I'm gonna do half the potatoes and then half of the seasoning and then put the other half on top. And I'll put a little bit of water at the bottom of the pan. I like my potatoes to be a little thick because I don't want them falling apart when I'm trying to scoop them out of here. And I only use a little bit of water in the pan because I don't like um I don't like it to be all like gunky and slimy and stuff. That's nasty. So I'll probably do about a fourth a cup of water at the bottom. And then for seasoning, simple. Just a little sugar, you know, a little sugar. Don't eat this if you're trying to lose weight. Um gonna do some cinnamon and some brown sugar but uh, just a little brown sugar and I don't measure I, I don't know how people come up with recipes because I can't measure nothing I just go until it look right and then I'll do like half a stick of butter on the top of this portion I hope all my potatoes fit in here And then I'm just gonna throw the rest on here. You know, don't gotta be perfect. They gonna cook down. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing, just some cinnamon. You don't need a lot of cinnamon. You know, just enough to taste it a little bit. And some sugar on top. And then, um, you know, a little bit of brown sugar and then I'm going to use the other half of my butter and put it on top and also going to throw in some vanilla extract I like a good bit of vanilla in mine you know you kind of do it how you like it and again I said I don't measure and then I'm just going to let that sit on top it ain't closed but you know it should cook down enough and the top should come down. But I'm gonna throw this in the oven um, until the potatoes are tender. All right, so now I'm gonna mix up the ground meat to make the meatballs. This is like um, maybe two pounds, a little more of ground meat. And in it, I will just do some garlic powder and some black pepper. Some seasoned salt. I gotta open, this is onion powder. Some salt. But I'm gonna do some uh, Worcestershire, Worcestershire, I don't know, however you say it. A couple dashes of liquid smoke. And then I like to add barbecue sauce um, inside. Also do a little bit of this uh, Parmesan cheese. So that's all the seasoning, and then I'm gonna do three 
eggs. And then I'm just going to mix it up. I don't have my gloves. Once you get it all mixed, you need to add in uh, like breadcrumbs or something. Because I don't measure, I can't tell you guys how much breadcrumbs I use. I just go by the feeling. So I don't want it to be feeling dry. I just want it to uh, hold together. That seems pretty good right there. You can kind of see. You can hold the ball. It'll come together pretty good. So that might have been a fourth a cup of breadcrumbs. Okay, so I'm just rolling out my meatballs. I try to make them all the same size so that uh, none of them overcook while they're in the oven. I cook my meatballs for about 10 minutes in the oven um, at 400 degrees and then I take them out and throw them in the slow cooker with barbecue sauce and let them cook the rest of the way. Um, I don't really like the frozen meatballs. Really, I mean, everybody will eat them. I don't really eat them, but everybody in the house will eat them if I make them. The only person that really likes them like that is uh, Larry, you know. I don't know why, but that's, that's what he likes. All right, so these are gonna go in the oven for 10 minutes at 400 degrees, and then I'll take them out and throw them in the slow cooker. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the meatballs out. They've been in the oven about 12 minutes instead of 10 but it's all good so this is how the meatballs look and then I like to use like a slotted spoon to kind of scoop them out because I want to get rid of uh, a lot of that fat okay so I got the meatballs in the slow cooker and then I'm going to try to like toss them around a little bit in the barbecue you just got to be careful because the meatballs are not done so you don't want them to break apart so um, I'm just gonna put the top on and let them go ahead and cook. I mean, honestly, that's really it for dinner. I just have to, um, I feel like you, you are very close. I just have to do the broccoli. I probably do like a broccoli cauliflower thing and steam it on the stove. Um, that's it. I'll come back and show you guys the finished plate. All right, y'all, so this is dinner. Um, just the barbecue meatball, sweet potatoes, and the cauliflower and broccoli. Only thing I did was add some salt, pepper, and Italian seasoning, and then butter, and some Parmesan cheese kind of on top. Um, but I'm about to go ahead and let all these kids eat so they can take a bath and get ready for bed. Uh -oh. All right, so today is, what is it, Tuesday? It's Tuesday, right? Oh yes, today is Tuesday, and for dinner today, it's gonna to be oven fried chicken, mac and cheese, and cabbage. I'm late, it's five o'clock. Usually I try to have dinner ready by 5.30, but it's gonna be late tonight. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just show you guys what I'm doing. All right, so I have already seasoned my chicken there, and I just used onion powder. This is onion powder. Uh, smoked paprika, garlic powder, a little bit of chicken bouillon, salt, seasoned salt, and pepper. And then I'm going to use about three spoonfuls of baking powder, and that helps the skin crisp up when I put it in the oven. So I'm going to go ahead and do the spoonfuls of baking powder, and uh, just use about three spoonfuls. So. No, I can't eat it. Yeah. You like to ate one. Okay, more. <laughs> I won't eat it, baby. No, Nate. No, 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 no. And I just mix it all together. Try to make sure everything gets coated. Especially the skin, because that's the part you really want to crisp up. And um, make sure you dry the chicken off. Because if it's the chicken skin is damp, then the seasonings won't stick. And neither will the baking powder, and it's not gonna crisp up in the oven. So just stir this up nicely. What? I'm making mine, y'all. Mine is not doing a good job. Oh. Alright, y'all, so I'm just gonna go ahead and So I just have my baking sheet, and then I have like this um, cookie rack that I put on top, and, I'm, and I sprayed it really good with some um, non stick spray. So I'm gonna lay the chicken on here, but just make sure that the skin isn't bunched up so that it'll crisp up in the oven. 
I'm gonna go ahead and throw this chicken in the oven. Um, I have my oven already preheated at 400 degrees, and this is gonna take about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to cook. So I have my pasta in here. Um, I'm just gonna cook them until they're a little tender, not too much, because I don't want them to overcook when I put them in the oven. But um, I made sure that I put, you know, a good amount of salt in the water. Okay, so I'm gonna start the mac and cheese. Um, I just put. It's just noodles and I put a little bit of salt and some pepper in there and I want to add in some milk I don't measure uh, you're gonna hear me say that a lot because I, I don't measure I'm gonna put some Monterey Jack mm, about a half cup cheddar I'm gonna put that on there Stir this to see how it looks as far as milk is concerned. So it's a little stiff. It's very stiff. So if I put it in the oven like this, it'll be stiffer. Add a little more milk. And then I'm gonna do two eggs. That looks good. And I also have like a half a stick of butter in the oven that's melting down and I'm gonna put in here as well. All right, so this is um, about to start the cabbage. I've shown how I made cabbage on my channel before, but just in case you didn't see it, this is about three um, slices of bacon, then that's a tablespoon of butter and then a little bit of garlic. Just gonna uh, finish letting the, melt, the butter melt down and the garlic kind of cook a little bit. And then I'm going to throw the cabbage in and just let it fry for a minute and then put the top on so it gets steamed. And I only use half a head of um, cabbage for us. Alright, so I'm going to let that cook down. So back to my mac and cheese. I'm just going to pour the melted butter in here. Yes. I'm pour this in my my little casserole dish here. So now I'm just going to put my cheese on top. So I'm going to do some more um, of the sharp cheddar. A little bit of the Monterey Jack. Or Monterey Jack, however you say it. And this is going to go in the oven for maybe, I don't know, 30, 30 minutes or so. Just want the cheese to get um, nice and brown and then you want everything to kind of come together. All right, see, so I just um, seasoned my cabbage with salt, pepper, and a little bit of seasoned salt. Not too much because, you know, cook it in bacon. And um, I'm going to pour a little bit of water in here and put the top on there so it can steam. And I'm going to go for the because everything else is in the oven. I just took the chicken out of the oven. It was in there for an hour. And let's see. See? Nice and crispy. And I didn't have to stand over no stove and get popped by no grease. This is the cabbage. I mean, it's just cabbage. But that's done too. All right, so this is the macaroni. So all of the dinner is done and it is only 6.05 so that took an hour uh, maybe an hour and 15 minutes when you count the prep to fix everything um, kinda, I'm going to let the macaroni kind of cool off a little bit before I fix the kids their meal and then I'll show it to you on the plate this is Heaven's plate I'm just going to cut the chicken uh, off the bone for her but this is what everybody's going to have for dinner tonight all right, y'all, so today is Wednesday and I'm starting dinner pretty early because I have a lot of schoolwork that the kids need to get done. 
and I have to work this afternoon. Um, so today is going to be just like an easy, quick pasta dish. Um, so I have some sausage over here in my pan that I'm browning up. And then um, I'm going to add in like some Italian sausage. And then I had a, a third of like a Jimmy Bean sausage roll. I'm just going to throw that in there too because I want to use it up. And that's what's over here. So I'm going to throw that in there soon as the sausage is done cooking. And then I'm going to add in, um, I'm going to saute it like a whole bell pepper and a half an onion and let that simmer for a little while in some spaghetti sauce and maybe add in some cheese or something. But uh, I'm going to get all that going and I'll come back and show you what it looks like once I get the sauce in there. So in here now I have the ground um, like Jimmy Bean sausage rolls. And then I did two Italian sausage links. I just took, the, took it out the casing. And I'm just going to let this brown up. Alright, so I just added uh, like a maybe half a tablespoon of um, olive oil to the pan. I'm just going to add in the peppers and onions. Um, like I said, I did one whole bell pepper and a half an onion. And I had to cut it up real small because my people in here, they don't like, you know, if they see the stuff, if they see it in here, they ain't gonna eat it. So I had to cut it up pretty small. But I'm gonna cook it down really good and then just add the meat back to the pan. This is the sausage that I use, the sausage links. Um, I think it's Eckridge. Um, I like their beef sausage. So this is what I usually buy, like for breakfast and stuff. But I just use it today in this pasta dish. Okay, so I just added the meat back to the pan with the peppers and onions and now I'm going to add the spaghetti sauce and then I'm just going to cut the pan down to low and let this simmer for a while um, Oh, I forgot the Parmesan cheese. Hold on. Alright, so I added the Parmesan cheese. I would say that's about a cup of Parmesan. And then I'm just going to uh, stir this up and let this simmer. Uh, maybe about 30-45 minutes. And then later on today, I will um, like cook up the noodles. And, you know, put it all together and let it bake in the oven. I almost forgot to show y'all the seasoning I used. Um, so I use uh, garlic powder, a little bit of smoked paprika, brown pepper, and a little bit of salt because, I mean, the sausage has enough salt. So um, just a little bit of salt. All right, y'all, so I'm about to start dinner. Well, finish dinner, really. Uh, I have the pasta here that I cooked. I'm going to go ahead and mix the sauce with this, put the cheese in it so I can throw it in the oven so it could be ready by 5. some mozzarella oh, yeah, so this is sharp white cheddar so I'm just going to do this this is like half of the block okay, so I got uh, the pasta mixed all together with the cheese and the sauce so I'm just going to pour it into my casserole dish Honestly, we should have a, a good bit of leftovers for one day this week, probably Saturday. I don't like to cook every day, so Saturday will probably be my off day of cooking. Throw a little cheese on top, so a little bit of Parmesan, more of the mozzarella. I'm gonna throw it in the oven. Uh, I had the oven at 400, but I think I'm going to cut it down to 375. So I'll just throw it in here uh, for about 30 minutes. I'll probably take it out at 5. And I'll show you when it's done. Okay, so this is the pasta fresh out of the oven. I'm going to go ahead and make all the kids' plates. And I will let you see what it looks like when they get on the plate. Alright, y'all, so it is... What is today? I keep forgetting what day it is. It's Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. And, uh, boy, <laughs> I do not feel like cooking today. Uh, the only thing that's making me cook is the fact that I don't want to spend my money because 
I don't feel like it. But um, I'm just gonna make like some stewed chicken rice and probably a vegetable out the can because I just ain't feeling it today. But I'm gonna have to move quick because I'm working and I don't wanna have, I don't wanna miss a call because you know my hands are dirty cleaning chicken. So I'm gonna probably do that off camera and then I'll just come back and show you once I get everything seasoned and I can put it in the pot. So I got the chicken cleaned and um, I seasoned it up. I'm trying to do this and keep my hands clean because I'm the next one for a phone call. Um, but I'm going to just like sear it up, I guess, so the skin gets a little crispy. I don't know why I do that. Does it really? I wonder if it really makes a difference if I sear it and then cook it down or if I just threw it in some water. I don't know. I think it has more flavor this way. Maybe one day I'll try it the other way, I don't know. But anyway, I got some oil heating up over here. It's still not hot though. No, it's not hot. I just put some olive oil in there. And I seasoned the chicken with smoked paprika, seasoned salt, black pepper, chicken bouillon. What's this, onion powder? Yeah, onion powder, salt, garlic, and then a little bit of this Creole seasoning because, you know, if it's too hot, then the kids won't eat it, so. I have to do a little bit of that. Just have to wait for the uh, oil to get hot so I can throw the chicken in there. And then I'll add some water and let it cook down. And then I take it off the bone and everything because it's less work I gotta do when I plate it up. I will probably just make some rice and um, probably corn or something, I don't know. What I'm trying to have, let me see, do I have corn? I do. So that's probably what they're going to eat for dinner tonight because I didn't feel like it. But I'm going to stop complaining and just get it done. I get off from work like an hour and a half so dinner should really be done by then because it won't take long to cook this chicken. I'm just going to let that cook until the skin is nice and brown and then I'll flip it over. So I got, just got the t uh, chicken out of the pot. And um, it's not cooked all the way, it's just brown on the outside. And then I got the oil still right there in the pot. I'm just gonna throw in some onion and bell pepper. Big chunks so that I can take it out. Because I don't wanna hear no wine in because people see bell pepper and onion in their food. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the chicken back in this pot. Got four cups of water right here. I'm just gonna pour in there. Kind of get it, get all the chicken kind of down in the water. And I'm just gonna cover it up and cut the heat up a little bit so that it can like, come to a boil. And that's it. I'm just gonna let that uh, come to a boil once it starts boiling pretty good for a little while and I'll cut it down. So the chicken's boiling pretty good in there. I'm just gonna cut it down a little bit to like a medium low and let it simmer down. Probably come back and uh, take the bones and stuff out at about 4 I have the chicken here. I pull it off the bone. That's the rest of the broth over there. And um, I just realized I don't have any cornstarch. So I had to pull some of the broth out here and let it uh, cool down. And then over here is like the broth that I cooled and some flour in there. So hopefully this will thicken it up enough. If not, it's gonna be all right today. So, I'm going to pour that in there. And then I'm gonna put the meat back in and um, let it cook so that it'll thicken up. I just added the chicken back. The broth is uh, thickened up. I don't want it to be too thick like gravy. So the kids are outside playing and um, so I'm just gonna let the chicken stay on like a low heat just to keep it warm. And then when they come in from outside, I'll just fix their plates. It's quiet in here. Levi's asleep. Larry's outside with Nathan. So it's nice and quiet. I'm about to sit down and look at some TV. 
Alright guys, so it's Friday and um, it's about 5.30. I'm just cooking something simple tonight. Just some burgers and fries. So I have four burgers here that I'm cooking. And I got the grease over here warming up to make the fries. And then I have three more burgers here that I have to cook. I just seasoned the burgers with salt, garlic powder, onion powder, and pepper. Nathan over there whining, you just have to ignore him. Uh, but yeah, something simple since it's Friday. I don't know what's gonna be used for dinner tomorrow because uh, I probably won't cook it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna let these cook up and I'm gonna start um, getting the buns ready to be toasted. Uh, so this is my plate, uh, just my burger and fries. The kids have already eaten. They're finishing up now. The only thing I forgot to get was some pickles. I like pickles on my burger, but it's all good. I'm gonna eat it anyway because I'm hungry. So that was it for Friday's dinner. And I have to figure out what's gonna be for dinner tomorrow. All right, good morning y'all. So today is Sunday. Um, I didn't cook yesterday. Uh, I didn't feel like it. I didn't feel like cooking. I knew I wasn't gonna cook on Friday. Today, I'm just gonna um, make pot roast. I'm gonna throw it in a crock pot and this is what i have over here so i have my roast and you need a ranch packet brown gravy and then whatever seasonings you like i'm just going to use um, salt pepper garlic powder and onion powder and then back here i'm making like beef broth i guess it's just two cups of water and then two beef bouillon cubes and then i'm going to add in some pepperoncinis and a stick of butter. And I'm just gonna let that cook, um, I guess about seven hours. It's gone on 11, so I like to have dinner ready by six. Um, I guess about three o'clock or so, I'll come back and add in potatoes and carrots so that they'll cook down and be ready um, by the time everything is ready at six o'clock. So I'm gonna do is just season up uh, the meat. Oh. With uh, the season as I showed earlier. Excuse me. And then I have the brown gravy packet and the ranch. Um, well, I guess you could just do like half on one side and then once you throw it in a pot pot, do half on the other. And kind of, you know, get the meat seasoned, get the seasoning packed down in the meat. You don't want all the seasoning just to fall off. So in the pie, I just have the roast with all the seasonings. I put the peppers around the sides of the roast, a stick of butter on top, and then I poured in the beef broth on the sides. I'm just gonna cover it up and let it cook. Okay y'all, so I just put the potatoes and carrots inside the crock pot. It has um, a little more than three hours left. Yeah, it's 3.30 now, so. I'll get those in there and they should be nice and tender by the time the roast is done. Okay, and this is dinner, pot roast with some Hawaiian rolls. Everybody's eating. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, thank y'all for watching uh, today's video. You got to see uh, a week's worth of meals. Um, I make a week's worth of meals sometimes. Not everybody eats it, but you know, I cook. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.